You don't have to exercise. You can live a sedentary lifestyle for the rest of your life and not have to deal with lifting weights or doing cardio. But there will be a price to pay when you're older, both on your physical and your mental health. In fact, it can mean a 400% increase in dying compared to someone that is in great health. And I'm not overstating this, no hyperbole here. In today's video, I will share the data that shows that having poor cardiovascular health and weak strength can lead to a greater cause of dying than even smoking. My name is Andrew Colasco, and from here on out, I'm going to be your very own longevity coach for you men out there that are 50 plus. Hit that subscribe button now so that you never miss a video and stay to the end so you don't miss a thing. Everyone says I should be exercising. It's good for me. But what a lot of people don't realize as they're doing so and putting it off is the hazard risks with not exercising. A lot of people, they're feeling fit, mobile, not a lot of aches and pains, not a lot of problems. But the truth of the matter is, is that they have not had to pay the price yet. Maybe they've got the genetics. Maybe they've got what I like to call a skinny fat. And they think as long as they keep their weight in check at a certain range, that means health. It does not necessarily mean good health. It's good to have it be in a good range. However, your true health is not predicted by your weight. That scale isn't telling you the entire truth. Let's not be sitting around waiting for some kind of giant wake up call to get us going on exercise like a heart attack. Did you know that 50% of the people have a heart attack? You know what their first sign of having a heart attack is? It's sudden death yes morbidly candidly though realistically only 50 percent will walk away from that first heart attack that's how sudden it is you don't just get this oh pain in your arm and then you're in the hospital and you get a bypass and you're good to go no 50 percent is just gone also let's not wait for both parents to be gone so that we have to see them suffer or that good friend from high school that's passed away. As you enter into your 50s, you start to see more and more of this happen. Don't wait for all these kind of wake up calls to come. Get exercising now. Do not wait for a casualty in your life to get going. So I know it's coming on pretty strong there. I don't want to relax about the issue though because this is serious stuff. So what I'm hoping now at this point is that you're saying, Andrew, this is what I want. I want to have all my future years ahead to be in the best health possible. And I would say, great, you're in the right place. Firstly, you're talking to the right guy. Secondly, I would tell you that exercise is the single most important longevity drug that you have in your toolbox. That's the best that anyone can prescribe, me or any list of doctors is that exercise. Do not wait for your mobility to go. Do not wait to have weak strength. Do not wait for pains and aches to come and heartbreak. Get to it, get going now because you wanna stay in shape, keep up with your grandkids, keep up with your wife so that you can have these future years and be spending the time with people you love doing the things that you love. So again, broken record here, but why should you exercise? There's no more potent tool available to you than that to improve your future years and extend out your life in good years. That includes nutrition. It includes sleep, the entire pharmacopoeia of supplements, drugs, medications, and hormones. The best thing for you is a super well-crafted training program that includes strength and muscle building as well as cardiovascular. You want to be able to split half of your week of your training for that strength and that muscle building and then the other half is to go towards that cardiovascular fitness. And that cardiovascular fitness, you break it into two segments, 80% into zone two training and about 20% into VO2 max training. With that kind of training plan in place, and if you need help with that, please check out this video here. It's the training program for your 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. I'll use a specific client example. His name's Gordy, and I'll show you how I hone and calibrate his program for him to get the most out of his training. Let's get on to the benefits, okay? We're gonna get to the physical, but let's start with the mental health component. Exercise is the single biggest elixir 
for brain health. It's even more powerful than sleep and nutrition. And those two are extremely important. Exercise is in a league of its own when it comes to reducing anxiety, depression, and even your bad mood. But how? Exercise impacts so many systems. Glucose disposal for insulin sensitivity, inflammation, produces growth factors for neurons, BDNF, and releases hormones such as dopamine, endorphins, and serotonins. These mental health advantages will reduce pain, reduce stress, regulate mood, and even make you happy. <laughs> Pretty spectacular, right? In addition to all those great mental benefits we just mentioned, there are the physical benefits which we're going to go through because there are many. Now, one minute sec here. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button, give it a thumbs up, subscribe because this will help my video to find other 50 plus men out there who need this kind of information. And it means a lot to me when you do so because I put a lot of work into these videos and it is a big reward for me when you do like, subscribe and leave a comment. And with that said, let's get back to the physical benefits. Now, I've got something that's going to blow your mind. If you take all the metrics associated with living long and health span, like cardiovascular fitness, high strength, high muscle mass, these associated benefits of this are greater to any extent than all the other hazard ratios of everything else that is bad for you, including high blood pressure, coronary heart disease, having type 2 diabetes, kidney disease, even smoking. To illustrate the enormity of the difference that exercise makes, let's look at all the different hazard ratios so that you can see exactly comparing those to exercise, what a difference it can make. Because this data will show you, and it's very clear, it will point out as follows. Hypertension is 20%. Type 2 diabetes is 30%. Smoking is a 50% increase in all cause mortality. Sounds pretty bad smoking, right? 50%. But being weak relative to being strong is 250%. Get this next one. Having a low VO2 max in the bottom 25% as opposed to being in the top 2.5% with great VO2 robust cardiovascular health. 400%. Like I said, blew your mind, right? Smoking, 50% greater chance of all-cause mortality. Sounds terrible. But then you see increased strength over week, 250%. Great VO2 max, 400% increase in your future longevity, your health, your overall quality of health, and how many years you've got ahead of you. So, these are the greatest indicators, right? You want to look at your VO2 max. You want to look at your muscle strength. You want to look at your muscle mass. And those are going to tell you how long you're going to live. And they blow the doors off of all those other bad things that you can do. You get that exercise right and your future is going to be locked and calibrated and ready to be the best that it can. We've talked about having a hearty, vigorous cardiovascular system, great strength and good lean muscle mass. Now let's look at the other benefit of exercise and that is increasing and maintaining your bone density. If you don't start exercising to maintain your bone density, it may do irreversible damage. Why? Because as you enter into your late 20s, your bone density, it's great. You can keep building it as long as you're exercising and putting force on those bones. But you enter into your 30s and you start to decrease bone density greater than you can grow and rebuild bone density. So you have to be applying force and compression to those bones. Otherwise, that bone is going to keep shrinking and shrinking and you might end up getting osteopenia. I want you to look at this chart here. You're going to see on this chart compared to a 35 year old, a 55 year old and an 85 year old the decrease in bone. Of course, that white section in the middle, that section right there is showing you how it can decrease over that period of time. Also, you will have a number of problems with this. Bone thinning causes pain, aches when you move, stiffness, bone fractures, 
back pain, and much more. So strength training, that's weight training, better called resistance training, is the best thing you can do to maintain your bone density and keep it as strong as you possibly can. I think it's helpful to get a little bit of background because we talk about getting bone density, maintaining it, and strengthening it. But how's that go about? So it's like this. You have shear force that's applied to the muscle, which is connected to the tendon. The tendon's connected to the bone. That's how the bone senses that compression when it's forced against it. It's sensing that and then osteoblasts are put into the bone cells and that is what maintains them or strengthens or builds them. So that helps us understand a little bit more about the bone density. Now let's go into another very important component and that is your lean muscle mass. So let's put that chart back up on the screen and talk about what's happening here. As you can see, just as happened with the bones, we're seeing in that red, that burgundy area there, that they are decreasing in size. This happens as a natural reduction in testosterone in men. If you don't train your muscles, they will just keep getting smaller as you get older. Why is muscle mass needed? Because having small muscle mass and weak bones can have many impacts, such as metabolic issues, such as weakness, such as increased chances of falling. And did you know if you fall, and this is how kind of the muscle mass and the strength of the bones works together. If you fall after age 65 and you break a hip or a femur, there's a 30 to a 40% chance that you will pass away in the next 12 months. And if you had a cane before that, now you'll be in a walker. If you had a walker, you'll be in a wheelchair. If you were in a wheelchair, you will now be bedridden. This is completely avoidable with a good exercise program, putting that force against your muscles, putting it on the bones and strengthening them together to protect yourself. Last but not least is your organs health. When you exercise, you are training your heart and your lungs. Your future self will come back and thank you for this because when you have a robust heart and lung system, then that will help lower blood pressure, reduce the risk of heart attack, reduce inflammation and improve circulation. Therefore, if you do not exercise, you are at a greater hazard risk for all the things that I just mentioned. You have everything to win by having an exercise program and doing it consistently and everything to lose by living a sedentary lifestyle. If you're ready to get serious and you want to get exercise working for your benefit, if you're not already exercising and doing that, because I know many of my subscribers, many of my viewers out there are doing it already, a good place to start just to see, to benchmark where you're at is to have a full body scan. That's called a DEXA. A DEXA, you can check out my video here on me getting my very own DEXA. You're going to be able to see how you will learn what your lean muscle mass is, what your visceral fat is, what your bone density is. And when you know all these things, you'll know the areas that you can work to improve on.